Thank you, sir. And thank you, Bansi Bhai, for giving this opportunity. And my topic is when to use triple the combination of glimipride metformin and cetagliptin. So I was asked to talk about case-based stu study. So this is our patient, 52-year-old male uh, with the diabetes for last four years. He had a quite high HbA1c of 9.1. Fasting is 164. PP is 248. And currently he is on the glimipride metformin, 3 and 3 milligram plus 500 milligram <coughs> once a day in the morning and metformin 1000 milligram once a day in the night. So total he is taking 3 milligram of the glimipride and 1500 milligram of the metformin total dose in a day. Uh, but his HbA1c is 9.1. So the question is what should we do now? Uh, and this is not very uncommon problem. Uncontrolled diabetes is a problem in India. Almost 70% of the patients in India has a HbA1c more than 7. And average HbA1c in India is 8.56. So we can do two things. We can increase the dose of the glimipride or metformin here. We can go in the metformin, we can go up to 2.5 gram. Or in, in case of glimipride, theoretically, you can go up to 6 to 8 milligram per day. But do we have any other options? So can we achieve the better glycemic control by increasing the dose of glimipride? here. So, but the risk of increasing the dose of glimipride or any sulfonyl urea is more the sulfonyl urea, higher the dose you are using, the more chances of progressive or early rapid, early beta cell dysfunction. Higher risk of hypoglycemia is definitely there when you are using sulfonyl urea, higher risk of weight gain is there and ultimately after 3 or 4 milligram per day there is a plateau effect. Beyond that there is no significant uh, benefit of using the glimipride in higher doses. Or can we achieve the better glycemic control by decreasing the glimipride and adding cetagliptin here? So, uh, as a pathophysiology, we are talking about common, this is a very common slide, ominous octet, are, these are the eight pathophysiological changes that, uh, is what, that leads to basically <coughs> development of the hyperglycemia and diabetes. So, impaired glu insulin secretion, increased glucagon secretion, increased hepatic glucose production, neurotransmitter dysfunction, peripheral insulin resistance, increased glucose uptake from the kidney, increased lipolysis and decreased incretin effect. So if we are using glimipride that is acting on the impaired insulin secretion, it is just increasing the insulin. If you just add the metformin, you see it reduces the hepatic glucose production, it somewhat increases decreases the peripheral insulin resistance, increases the peripheral uptake of the glucose from the skeletal muscles. It has some what effect on the lipolysis also and indirectly it has some effect on the incretin effects also. And to that if you add cetagliptin or DPP-4 inhibitor, uh, you are additionally covering this uh, increased glucagon production. Apart from that it has some what effect on the neurotransmitter dysfunction. Uh, GLP-1 is the more effective here, but again this one has a, but apart from that increased incretin effect is a very important effect. So here we are covering almost 7 out of 8 pathophysiological changes if we combine these 3 drugs. So this is one of the Indian study, phase 3 study of combination of the cetagliptin, glimipride and metformin that was conducted in India. Uh, it was a multi-center randomized double blind study. And here they selected a patient, 392 patients who were on the glimipride 4 milligram and metformin more, more than 1500 milligram for at least last 10 weeks. And their HbA1c was more than 8. So this is like typical our patient. They divided these into two groups. One was the fixed dose combination of the cetagliptin 50 milligram, metformin 1000 milligram and glimipride just 1 milligram BD. So here they reduced the glimipride dose from 4 milligram to 2 milligram, added a cetagliptin. And there was a comparator in which the metformin 1000 milligram and glimipride 2 milligram BD was used. So 4 milligram of the uh, glimipride and uh, 2000 milligram of the metformin was used. And primary endpoint was the HbA1c reduction at the 16 weeks. So basically it was the step down approach for the glimipride dose. And these were the results. 
at the end of the 16 weeks, there was 1.79 reduction in the HbA1c in the treatment group as compared to the compared group, that is 1.28. It is a significant HbA1c reduction, if you see, despite reducing the dose of the glimipride. So basically, this 16-week study, they extended it to, uh, further extended it to 24 weeks. Uh, and beyond that, and uh, here they up-titrated this FDC combination of citagliptin. Here the 50 milligram, metformin 1000, and they increased the glimipride to 2 milligram. And see what response, if we are using the glimipride 2 milligram, that is 4 milligram per day, what would be the response? So, almost at the end of 28 weeks, there is the HbA1c reduction to the tune of 2.37 gram per cent. Significant, very significant HbA1c reduction if you are maintaining the glimipride dose and adding the cetagliptin. Uh, mean reduction in the fasting blood glucose was 53. Mean reduction in the postprandial glucose was 78 at the 28 weeks. And proportion of the patients achieving HbA1c less than 7% at the 28 week was 53%. So almost 53% of our patients achieved the target here in this study. Hypoglycemic events were slightly increased in this test group, but uh, all these patients had a basically level 1 hypoglycemia and most of these patients were asymptomatic. So to this our patient, uncontrolled type 2 diabetes, so now we have an option to maximize the treatment effectiveness by adding the citagliptin to the metformin and if we can try the reduction on the glimipride dose, we should first try that. Uh, these are the ACE guidelines 2023 20, that su suggest that the early combination therapy can be used if your HbA1c is more than 8.5 or your target HbA1c is more than 1.5 beyond the range. And so finally, when to use this combination? First thing is to reduce the pill burden. If the patient is already on these three drugs, you can use a combination drug and you can reduce the pill burden and improve the adherence and compliance of these patients. If HbA1c is more than 8 to 9, on dual therapy, two drugs patient already taking, you can add another drug and uh, that, that way you can use it. And you can reduce the dose escalation of the escalation and avoid the risk of hypoglycemia, particularly in the patients who are at the risk of hypoglycemia, elderly patients, frail patients, patients who have a de mild derange of derangement of the general function, all these patients you can try this thing. And the HbA1c more than 9 with the newly diagnosed or recently diagnosed type 2 diabetes, as per the newer guidelines, you can start with a 3-drug combination. Thank you.